This building was originally a dairy and bakery that supported the house next door. So what's tricky about it is its long, narrow floor plan and lack of internal circulation. I want to turn it into a two bedroom home that feels spacious and that's inspired by the existing materials. As ever, please do keep sending me your video ideas of small, awkward spaces that you either own or you see for sale. And thank you to the website platform Squarespace for sponsoring this video. This building caught my eye for a few reasons. It's got a beautiful depth of color in the stone and brickwork that shows the care and craftsmanship that was put into building this structure. And these large roof trusses on the upper floor give that same impression. On the south gable wall, you have this grand arched window that seems to be dedicated to capturing the light and views in this direction. But in contrast, on the ground floor, there are two tiny high windows that serve rooms the size of toilet cubicles. So you can tell that this was a functional building, there to be used rather than enjoyed. And this is particularly evident in all of these doors at ground floor level. In plan view, you can see that there are multiple access points into individual isolated rooms, which makes total sense for the purposes for which it was built, but makes no sense if this is to become a house. There's no clear hierarchy of space or entrance sequence to go through in this building. And those are some of the elements that will transform this from a working structure into a domestic one. There's also no internal circulation route, either horizontally or vertically. So I'll need to introduce a staircase. And with this long, narrow building, there isn't an obvious heart of the house where you'd want to put your main living spaces. So the first thing I did when looking at this property was to identify its orientation to see where the best quality of light and passive warmth would be coming from. That's at the south end here, where you have this lovely big window on the first floor, but next to nothing at ground floor level. So my priority is to be opening up this end of the building to the sun and filling it with warmth and light as far as I can. Now this end room is about three and a half meters wide, so not huge by any means. And if this space becomes the kitchen or living room, the units or furniture will quickly shrink the space and limit its usability. So increasing the floor area at this end of the building seems the obvious thing to do to increase its range of uses. But tacking on an extension to the end wall is just going to make this building even longer and narrower, meaning your main living space would have to just have a backwards and forwards circulation route. And the extension itself could end up reducing the influx of light to the existing end room and defeating the whole reason for its introduction. So I want to try and both open up this end wall and widen this whole space to start to create an open plan living area that you can move about more freely. So instead of extending out to this end, I want to sort of shift the extension off to the side and take away the corner of the building to completely open it up across this space diagonally. And in doing that, the opportunity for an entrance sequence has opened up too, with the introduction of an additional area that creates a threshold before entering the main building through this existing door here. So before I take you into the building, I just want to introduce you to the website platform Squarespace. If you're a designer or maker of some sort, having an online portfolio is so valuable as a first step in developing your brand. And it's then just a small step to turn that portfolio into a business by creating products that you can sell online. So perhaps you could sell, say, downloads of furniture drawings you've produced or prints of your artwork. Whether they're physical, digital or service products, you can go through the whole process of marketing, fulfilling and shipping them via your Squarespace website. Whatever your ideas, head to Squarespace for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash Gemma Wheeler to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. So here is the extension and you can see I really wanted to play on the red tones of the existing stone and brickwork of the building by using a deep reddish orange for the standing seam aluminium cladding. I like the warmth it creates and the way that it would highlight the surrounding greenery and be a visual focus that you're drawn to. That seems appropriate for an entrance area. And again, to kind of draw you in, I've just chamfered this end wall inwards to form a small covered porch before you go through the door. 
and then as you go through, you have this external stone wall, still exposed and visible. And with the existing window above, which adds to the feeling of this being a threshold space between the outside and inside. There's plenty of storage for coats and boots and so on. And then again, you're kind of drawn into the interior of the building by being given this glimpse of the rooms beyond through this glazed panel. So coming through one of the original doors of the building, you're now in the heart of the house, the kitchen, which is in the room that looks like it may originally have been the bakery, judging by this old oven and chimney. I imagine there was once a big table in the middle of the room then too, but people would have come and gone through these doors, which are now windows over the worktop. You can see in the photo that this room has an old stone or concrete floor. I can't quite tell which, but I've suggested continuing the same black and red quarry tiles that are used elsewhere in the building and taking them up to the end wall to kind of mark out the footprint of the original space. So, in removing the end corner of the building and stepping the extension to one side, you can see that you get a good sized glazed opening at the end of this original room that could wrap round into the corner of the new portion. That means you get the light coming in deeper into this kitchen space and it also creates a small terrace that faces both the kitchen and the new living space. And then creating a glazed corner seat in the far corner means you now have the benefit of light coming in from three sides of the building and views out on three sides too. And the depth of that window seat gives the opportunity for these new walls to be lined out with lots of fitted joinery for both storage and display. And you can see now that internal glazed panel from the entrance space where I've created a slight decorative element that echoes the distinctive curved window from the first floor that you can see at the same time when you view the whole arrangement from the outside. So now to move through the building, this wall beside the old bread oven would need to be opened up to this central room, which happens to be an almost ideal size for a central staircase. It already has a door accessing this room beyond, which looks like it might have been the original dairy, judging by the tiles on the walls. Now for a while, I wasn't sure what to do with this end room. When I first started looking at the building, it seemed like it might need to be the kitchen, but I wasn't keen on it being down at the north end like this. I also wondered if it should be an additional bedroom or office space, but again, it doesn't have great quality of light. And actually this external door to one end is used as the connecting point to the house next door. So that potentially makes it a bit of a circulation route. So once I was clear on what I wanted to do at the south end of the building, I decided that this room should hold all the necessary functional elements of the ground floor, like the utility, a pantry and a toilet. So while the central space can still be used as a route through, you have a large pantry to one side of the room and to the other side you have a utility cupboard and a WC which would benefit from this little covered window under the outside stair. So back to the staircase and there's a little bit of storage beneath it and an existing door to this area that can act as an escape route directly to the outside. I've introduced a roof light over this area to bring light down into the center of the building and also kept the stone of the chimney breast visible. Upstairs, I need to accommodate two bedrooms and a bathroom. Now these aren't big spaces and that's not helped by the room heights, which are pretty low at the eaves. I need to get a standard height door into this new bedroom at the north end which means the bed needs to be oriented against a different wall. And I think unfortunately it would mean closing off this window. But there is an external door at the end that opens up out onto a stone staircase. So I've shown this as a large glazed opening instead and suggested that the staircase could be treated a bit like a balcony or maybe closed off so someone can't just wander up there. But equally, it could just stay as it is or be partially filled in to become a window. There's enough space for a wardrobe, which I've shown in the same color as the walls since it can't be hidden away in a recess. And then across the landing, there is space for a small shower room on the other side of the chimney breast. 
Again, door heights mean this space is reduced, but I think it's comfortable enough like it is, especially if a new roof light is introduced above it. And then finally, the other bedroom connects visually with the entrance area of the extension, while also opening up some views out beyond it. And with a layout that is similar to the other bedroom, you get the lovely arched window at the end that overlooks the new portion of the building and the views beyond. So I hope this has given you lots of ideas for ways to work with a narrow, non-residential historic building and to use the existing materials as a source of inspiration to make what could be quite a comfortable little family home. If you enjoyed this, please do share my videos and encourage others to subscribe so that I can keep making them. And of course, do keep sending me any strange or small historic buildings that you'd like to see me transform.